Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Gersh, on our Backwoods Pursuit, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to set up the Zeiss Victory RF rangefinding binoculars. We're going to go through the Victory RF uh, instructions and how to get the most out of these rangefinding binoculars. Uh, and this is going to be a two-part video series. In part one here, we're going to go through the basic functions of the rangefinding binoculars. In part two, we're going to go through getting your ballistic profile set up and whatnot through the app and then transferring those over to the unit to make sure you're going to get the absolute most out of these that you can. So I always really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll we'll put links to that down in the description for you. I will put a link to the Victory RF the range finding binoculars down in the description for you as well. And check out our website, backwoodspursuit.com, and tons of other gear reviews over there. I'll link to that in the description. Let's dive into how to set up the Victory RF range finding binoculars. All right, so these Zeiss Victory RF rangefinding binoculars, uh, these are the 10 by 42, but it, the same is gonna apply for the other models that they offer. We're gonna go over to start here, the basics of how to get these things set up so that we can then get to the ballistic profiles and we're not creating those in the app and in the binoculars themselves, and then some of the functionality and uses here. So this is gonna be a multi-part video series here to make sure we cover everything we need to in the functionality of these rangefinding binoculars. Now to start, one of the first things I like to do when I, when I get these is to get the binoculars themselves set up. Now with a range finding binocular, it is a little bit different than some of the other, uh, just a, a typical a binocular out there because you have not only the diopter here to, to get focused, you also have the focus mechanism here that's just under this right eye cup that focuses the, the reticle for the range finder. So the method that I found to work best in these is to go ahead and cover your, your left eye here, or the left barrel, or just close your left eye, then use the main focus wheel and get that right one focused uh, just the way that you want to as far as uh, the image clarity. Then go ahead and use your, your focus mechanism here, which is gonna bring that, the, 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 uh, the reticle from the rangefinder into focus. You'll hit the button here to turn it on and then get that focus just right for you. Then the last step, then you're gonna go ahead and cover this right eye now, and then focus the left eye with the diopter. Now it's a little bit basically the opposite of what I typically do with a binocular because you have that focus mechanism in there. And I found that while you're focusing the, the reticle in there, sometimes that affects the, the clarity of the image as well just a bit. So I wanted to get that one focused first. So that's the steps I go through first to get that set up. Of course, your main functionality here, your main focus wheel is right there. And then the, the buttons we're gonna be using the most here on this side, on the right-hand side, is the fire button, as well as the left-hand side here is gonna be your function or your, your settings button. So if you're gonna cycle through different settings. So those are the two buttons, just two. They're really ergonomic, they're right there in line. So you can be focusing with your, your index finger and then using your middle finger here to hit that, that uh, the button here on the top. So it's really nice that way. It takes a little bit of getting used to, I will certainly say that because most of your range finding binoculars have the button up here on the top. These being down in line on the barrel, they're, uh, they're very, very nice, nice crisp click, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. One other thing to note here on general functionality uh, is before we get into setup, is that these are designed to, be, uh, to fire that range when you let the button up rather than when you push it. Most other range finding binoculars and range finders out there, they're gonna fire that, that laser when you push the button down and then it'll return that range for you. These are different in that you hold that button down until the crosshairs get on what you want to range and then let that up and it's gonna provide that range for you. The reason they did that is that it allows you to stay on target a little bit better. It's not gonna move that optic when you're pushing the button, it tends to move it more than if you're holding it down, getting it where you want, and just lightly let up. I found it to work really, really well, but until I realized that, it was, it was a little bit confusing as far as when it was ranging and whatnot. So uh, the other thing that there's, there is no on with this switch here. You don't hit it once to turn it on like a lot of range finders. You basically just are glassing, hit the button and, and hold it down, and it, it turns on, and then let the button up when you wanna return that range. Another thing that that accomplishes is it's a battery saving function. Because you don't have to first turn the unit on with a button click, find your target, and then rearrange, it's all one motion, pushing the button, holding it down, the donut appears, 
you find your target and just release the button and it returns your range. You, aren't, you don't find yourself with as many inaccurate ranges. Uh, it's much more precise that way. The unit doesn't move when you push the button because you're letting the button up. Uh, when you are finding the target that you want to range. So you have more accuracy in your range and ability, which is going to save you on the number of ranges. And of course the battery has a limited number of ranges uh, per battery. So it's a battery saving function as well as a great functionality in the way that it can more precisely measure the range for you. Now as we get into the battery aspect, the battery goes right here on the, in the hinge area, which it's nice and out of the way. There's no protrusions anywhere, which is really nice. Basically just unscrew that with either a coin or a screwdriver. They'll, they'll pop right out and then put the CR2 battery right in there with the plus side pointed towards the eye cups. And you'll get roughly, they say 2,500 plus ranges out of one battery. Of course, that's going to vary greatly depending on how much you're using and connecting it to the app. Uh, the temperatures make a big difference in the battery life as well as the ability of the, of the unit to range, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of variables in there, but that's just a rough figure. I believe it's estimated at 68 degrees uh, for that 2,500 plus ranges. Um, so you'll get a plenty of life out of these. It's going to last you a long time that way. Now, when you take this out of the box and get your battery installed, it's going to come in European uh, units. It's going to come metric. So if you're in the States like we are here, you're going to want to change that to Imperial if that's your preferred choice. And it's also going to come with some defaults in there. Uh, the best thing to do is to go ahead and set that to whatever defaults you're going to be using. If it's going to be uh, the, the metric side or the imperial side, make sure that that's set up properly. That's going to be our baseline before we get into some of the other programming. So dive in there first and, and check that out. You can just use it right out of the box once you get the metric or, or imperial set up. Um, and there's not, you don't have to set up all the other functions we're going to go through here. It operates just perfectly without that. But to get the most out of this thing, stay tuned here as we go through the full setup on the Victory RF range finding binoculars. All right, to get started on setting this up from a basic perspective, this is going to be the, this, the basic menu options here, and then we're going to get into the more details of setting up a ballistics profile as well as changing what you see in, in, a, in the range finding unit. Now, all that can be changed either in the unit or through the app. I'll show you how to do that. The app is a much easier way to go about that, but you can do it either, either way. That's going to be in the next video, so stay tuned for that video as well. But to get started, you're going to go ahead and hold down the settings button, which is on the left-hand barrel here. Hold it down for three seconds, and then the unit will open up or, or uh, power up. And the first thing that I see here is going to be the brightness setting. Um, you're going to see it goes up to 11, then down to 1, and it kind of goes in, in you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, and then 10, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, that kind of functionality. So I found that 7 works the best or so far of what I've used. I like that setting. It's bright enough in the bright light, but not too, uh, not too bright in the lower light. And keep in mind that each of those settings is adaptive. So it's going to be a little brighter or not quite as bright depending on the, the lighting outside, which is really, really nice. It's something I love seeing in a range finding uh, unit. So very nice that way. So you pick the, the brightness that you like, and then you're going to go ahead and hit this left hand button again, the settings button again to move to the next ballistics setting. So this is your ballistics curve. There's an up to nine options here that you can select. There's a bunch of them that are pre-selected within the unit, but we'll get into how to build your own for your specific rifle, your specific load that you're using. Uh, so we'll do that here later, but you can go ahead and select that here at this juncture. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at just the, the default of one, and then uh, we'll move to the next one. So push the setting again. The next option is DL. Uh, and that is going to be your display option. So DL3 in this case is what mine's set at. And again, I'll show you how to change the display. Uh, there's a whole bunch of options there. You can even create your own, which is really cool. That'll be in the next video. But that you can go ahead and select that display uh, with that. So display, I've got to set on display three. Again, we'll go into that later. And then if you want to change the setting, you're going to hit the right hand fire button here. So you know, three, four, five, six, seven whatever your setting is there. So that's your next option there. Now, if you click the setting button again, we're going to go over to the units. And this is where you can change from yards to meters. In my case, I want to use yards here in the US. That's going to be the, the unit that I'm going to be preferring. Now, the next unit is going to be, it's going to show as a TA, and that's going to be either TAB or TAL. Uh, the B stands for the best uh, the best target, and the L stands for the last or, or furthest target. 
So if you want to make sure you're getting the range from the furthest object, if you're trying to range through trees or brush or that sort of thing, you're going to select L. If you want the all around the best range, then you're going to, you're going to use the B. And that's the one that I typically utilize is I leave it on B and, and that's what's worked really well for me. Now this last option, you're going to see a five and then dash dash and then a degree sign. If you click this right button again, it's going to switch to a degree sign dash dash five. And what that is doing is it's changing the controls on the unit. So if you are left-handed, you want that to be on the degree dash dash five. And then if you're right-handed, you want it to be on the five dash dash degree sign. It comes default right-handed. I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. But if you prefer to have the fire button on the left-hand side here, you can change that even if you're right-handed, of course. And then if not, then you go ahead and leave it on the default setting. So those are the basic settings of the Victory RF. You can get those set up and just get out and start using it. Um, but there's a whole lot more we can do inside of each of those settings. So we're gonna get into that in the next video. We're gonna dive into changing what you see in the display, what the, you know, whether you're seeing a line of sight or an angular uh, display. You can, uh, you can set up your, your MOA or mill correction in a number of different fashions. Um, so we're, we're gonna go into all of those details as well as you can build profiles for your specific loads and your weapons. Uh, so a lot you can do in here. So that's in the next video here. Stick around for that. But that'll get you started on the Zeiss Victory RF range finding binocular. Awesome binoculars, awesome range finder. Really has performed well for me. But uh, let's dive into next the, the details of getting this set up for your specific, especially if you're a long range shooter, you're gonna want to get into that and, and get this set up specific for your particular load and your, your weapon. So thanks for watching here today. Drop any questions or comments down in the comment section. Love to help you out if we can, if we can be of any assistance to get the setup for you, love to do that. Stick around for the next video. Thanks for watching here and we'll see you next time.